So the main topic this evening is uh, selected financial instruments and solidarity. It's a wide subject. We're focusing on this particular aspect of it this evening. So the starting point for this situation is the corona crisis, uh, which we is presenting us with a situation uh, involving serious consequences. This is uh, providing a challenge uh, for the politicians to introduce sat um, appropriate programs with the objective of achieving some form of stability. Uh, uh, Caroline is looking this evening at specific financial instruments which um, are appropriate for use in this uh, situation. Um, these are divided fundamentally into two on the one hand, we have the revenue financed, and on the other hand, the debt financed instruments. When we talk about the revenue financed uh, instruments, we're concerned here with uh, deposits, um, government revenues such as taxes, uh, recovery funds, and uh, solidarity extra charge. On the debt finance side, we're talking about credits and bonds, which uh, there's been a lot of mention of recently, and um, the capital markets. We talk about the European uh, social model and the corona bonds. So um, here we're going to take a look at the financial instruments in the corona crisis. On the one hand, on the left side, we have here the instruments, the ESM, the Corona Bonds, Recovery Funds, Solidarity Extra Charge, and EU funding programs. Uh, on the other side, we have the, the target groups, um, the EU states, and then in the second um, section, we have the short-time work subsidies, which are very important for us. Uh, the social contract. These are directed to the workers. And then uh, we have underneath the uh, European investment bank loans, the uh, scrapping premium and the remission of social levies for specific industries, for example, which are directed at uh, businesses, enterprises. Um, as we go on, we're going to uh, limit ourselves to uh, instruments which are directed towards the states. So here um, we're going to take a look at uh, the instruments. We're looking here at um, how the ESM borrows money on capital markets. The loans are secured by deposits from EU states forwarding the money to needy states. Um, the Deposits are secured by share capital with available capital, and this constitutes together the liability capital of the EU states. Um, with the example of Germany here, uh, Germany uh, provides 22 billion euros of the share capital plus 168 billion euros of available capital. Um, this involves liability uh, it, uh, to the amount of 190 billion euros. And uh, in terms of how this is composed, uh, that means 27% is uh, Germany's share, 18% uh, is Italy's share, Spain has a share of 12%, and the Netherlands 5.5. So these are a few examples to uh, put the, uh, the, cut, the amount of money into perspective. So um, we have uh, this as a uh, uh, precautionary instruments and an instrument for structural reform. Um, it's used as a conditional credit and the use of this involves the fulfillment of certain economic policy requirements and also uh, only states who have ratified the Fiscal Pact are entitled to uh, use this money. 
So now uh, we're talking about the principle of solidarity, the interest rate release for borrowers um, are interesting because the better interest rates are available due to joint deposits um, and there's joint and several liability in this context. Um, Mutual solidarity due to deposits, liability conditions and control. This means um, indebted st uh, states provide guarantee for the capital borrowed. Therefore, states which are in serious debt can get indirect subsidies uh, in this way because the um, money they borrow is much cheaper to access. The, um, the, however, if they uh, make use of this favorable, uh, favorable capital, uh, favorable interest rates, they must fulfill a lot of uh, regulations in order to use it. Mm, uh, therefore, the, the conditions are important and the controls. Um, the, a big advice, the, the possible application is short term and the accuracy is high. Advantages of this system are that it can be implemented at short notice and it's a big volume of money. It involves mutual solidarity. Obviously, um, there are disadvantages involved due to the uh, political situation um, to increase the debt uh, ratio. And obviously there's a kind of uh, stigmatization involved. It's a limitation of sovereignty. The countries make themselves rather dependent in this context. So now we're talking about the corona bonds, which have created some very hefty discussions over recent weeks. Uh, these involve uh, joint borrowing uh, in the context of the EU, forwarding money to states according to a specific key. Uh, for example, the degree of need caused by the crisis. Uh, they involve or, or they represent joint funding instruments to mitigate the consequences of corona and make debt assignment possible. In other words, if the countries are unable to pay their uh, interest on these, they can assign the interest to another state. Um, the conditions range from conditional to unconditional credits and uh, they work according Ich habe glaube ich gerade Internetprobleme. Ja. Ich höre Carol nicht mehr. Ich auch nicht. Okay, dann Okay. Okay. Are you back again, Carol? Uh, can you yeah, yeah, can you yeah, hear me now? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, a little. Yeah. I, I have the message. Ihre Internetverbindung ist instabil. Ah, okay. okay um, yeah. So uh, we have the principle of solidarity. The loan conditions. If a country is unable to pay its interest, they can be subsidized by uh, states with good credit rating. Everyone is liable for everyone. It's a a total uh, system one-sided solidarity of the states with good credit rating, which will presumably assume states of countries which are mm. unable to pay their interest. A possible uh, application can be short-term to mid-term. The bonds have to be defined. As far as the accuracy uh, of this system is concerned, it's low to high, depending on the earmarking of the funds and control. And um, advantages of the system are short to midterm implementation. And again, uh, a big volume is possible, which is required in the current time. And uh, on the downside, of course, uh, are the incentives, the moral hazard is particularly worth mentioning. Um, they are politically unenforceable, uh, which is what worries a lot of states and involve high liability risks. So uh, now we're talking about the ESM light decision of the EU finance ministers um, taken on the 15th of May. 
And uh, this is really the same function as already uh, mentioned. The ESM borrows money on capital markets. The loans are secured by debts from EU states forwarding that money to needy states. Uh, it is used as a precautionary instrument to mitigate the consequences of the crisis and stabilize the European economy. Um, we're talking here about a volume of 240 billion euros, uh, which could be used of the still available 410 billion euros. Every member state is entitled to apply for such a credit. Uh, the application limit is 2% of the gross domestic product. Uh, and the application requirement is that the money must be used to finance the health system in comparison to the conditions of the normal ESM. This requirement is rather weaker, and this is the reason for calling it the ESM light. So here, um, the principle of solidarity in this contact, uh, context, um, there is relief in the interest rate for borrowers because of the um, better interest rates due to the joint deposits, joint and liable, joint and several liability. Uh, the strong states can um, create good conditions for the economically uh, weaker states. Um, this is a mutual solidarity uh, due to the deposits. Um, possible application of this is short term. It's planned to be implemented in June 2020. The accuracy is high. Um, it depends on control instruments, which have still got to be defined. A very positive aspect here is the short-term help. No additional deposits are needed. The rather weaker, softer conditions mitigate the issue of loss of sover sovereignty um, by comparison with the corona bonds, for example. On the downside, it involves greater debts and no debt assignment is possible. So um, here, after talking about the instruments, we're looking at the debt cycle, uh, where the problem of high debt incurrence um, comes about. We have um, the debt cycle presented to us here, the high sus susceptibility to crisis uh, means we need more money, a higher debt ratio, and worse credit rating. This in turn leads on to high debt ratio, high financing costs, bad credit race, uh, rating, and uh, consequently reduced scope of action. And indeed, this means a reduce when we have a number of countries in the European Union with seriously reduced scope of action, this in turn uh, reduces the scope of action for all countries. The uh, enlargement of economic and social differences in Europe as a consequence of this corona crisis could mean the loss of acceptance in the EU and the reduced scope of action uh, for everybody. So uh, the only way to solve this problem is with debt relief and um, a common economic uh, policy. So uh, now we're talking about the uh, EU Recovery Fund. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen was commissioned to construct uh, a, a model here um, with a volume of 540 billion euros, um, which has now been uh, promised. Uh, Merkel and Macron have uh, discussed adding another 500 billion euros to in increase the EU budget with guarantees for borrowing by the EU on capital markets. This was the plan on the 18th of May. Uh, this would be a common instrument to finance recovery programs, analog to funding programs, 
structural programs in the EU to compensate for differences in developments. Mm, it can be used in all funding levels. However, we need to look here at uh, how to define it, who gets, how much, and what are they going to use it for. There will be an application requirement involved, the earmarking of funds in line with the fund or program. Here again, the principle of solidarity, uh, an equally configurable instrument between payers and receivers. Uh, if it is used sensibly, it could contribute very much to the stability of Europe. It should be to the benefit of net payers and net receivers alike. Possible application is short term. The EU has already had concepts like this in the past. So if it was agreed, it could be implemented very quickly um, for short or midterm uh, projects. The accuracy would be high again. So uh, we have the benefits of a big volume as possible. It's a familiar instrument. The risks are limited to the deposits made. There's no increase of the debt ratio. Uh, but on the downside, uh, it's presumably applicable in midterm crisis related postponement between net payers and net uh, receivers. Agreements could be difficult. The Corona crisis has affected West and Southern uh, Europe more badly than Eastern Europe. So we could have the situation of a change around between the payers and receivers. So uh, as a last instrument, we have here the solidarity uh, extra charge. Um, solidarity, uh, this will be charged on incomes that citizens of the EU uh, will be supporting other citizens with their own instruments, with their own incomes. Um, we're talking here about an instrument for financing recovery programs. However, in order to implement such a program, we need to conclude a solidarity pact to define the, uh, what the money is going to be used for. This solidarity pact and the solidarity extra charge would work on the, according to the principle of solidarity. The funding would be borne by uh, workers and they, it would be problematic if they don't have the opportunity to control what is done with their money. This would involve unilateral solidarity in advance, which needs communication and transparency as to what is to be done with the money. Uh, a lack of transparency here would mean a loss of trust and confidence in the people. It could possibly be applied midterm. First of all, the acceptance has to be uh, gathered and the um, solidarity pact has to be concluded. The accuracy would be high because the earmarking and control systems would need to be defined. A very positive thing about this instrument is that it is by citizens for citizens. It would call could create a distribution of the burden created by the crisis according to the different possibilities that individual citizens have. And it would involve uh, all citizen levels. On the long term, it would involve a big volume. However, a solidarity pact is necessary, which involves uh, time and uh, acceptance is needed also ongoing acceptance throughout the application. So uh, two main points in conclusion so that we have uh, time to go into the discussion. Uh, very fundamental is that for the future, more important than where the money comes from is where the money is going. And um, if the invested a volume is big enough to initiate an economic and investive cycle. And if the money is invested in future proof projects, for example, the integration of economic health programs and the Green Deal are extremely important here. From a social point of view, care must be taken that nobody is left behind. Uh, very fundamental that the 
answer to the question how funds are used is much more important than the question of which is the best financing instrument. So uh, the second point, which would uh, also be important for the discussion is that um, now it's time uh, to look at the aspect of solidarity. A common economic and fiscal policy is needed. That's the way to achieve equal rights and obligations for all and forms a good basis for a balance of solidarity within our generation, both the payers and the receivers, not that the payers feel exploited and the receivers feel um, in a bad situation and without sovereignty. Uh, also between us and the next generations, uh, because we would like to pass on values to them and not debts.